The next learning objective is differentiation between data and information. The data is facts and figures represented with text, numbers, and tables. And this is a list of characters or numbers that are given to a computer for processing. Now, once the computer processes this information um, and generates new data, once this data has a context with, associated with it, it becomes information. And so information is the meaning behind the data. It's the data with context or relations for human understanding. Let's look at the example of a flood monitoring system um, for a river. Here, the data is the numbers and characters that come from satellite images, uh, online hydrological data, digital terrain model, and um, data generated by crowdsourcing. Now, all of this data is processed by computers. Um, there could be all sorts of processing going on, for, exa uh, for example, the image processing, the forecasting of water discharge in the river. Um, but all of this uh, is fed into some automatic modeling system, which is capable of uh, um, processing it and performing various spatial uh, um, analysis on it to render the results that can be used by humans. And these results could be uh, presented on the desktop screen, and they could be presented on a mobile device or even published um, through a forecasting uh, or warning system. If we look at this whole process of the flood monitoring system, the data which had its own sources went through a certain process to create information um, which can be used by humans. If a human was given information about a satellite image or elevation information or some rainfall information, it may not be directly useful at that moment. So, But the computer takes it through a certain process and converts it into um, data with context. So now a human consuming this information will be able to make certain decisions, whether um, they could be a potential flood or another weather event that a certain action needs to be taken. So all in all, the GIS helps us in creating timely information which tra can translate to it into saving money. Um, when we look at the pyramid of uh, the DIKW, which is data, information, knowledge, and wisdom, we get a little different perspective of how the uh, information um, uh, transforms into knowledge and eventually wisdom. So as we talked about earlier, data is simply uh, simple uh, facts and figures. They, they just exist. But once they are put in a certain context for human uh, consumption, it becomes information. And when um, information from in, in different forms in, is inter, uh, interconversed, then it becomes knowledge. So um, if we look at this plot, we have on x-axis understanding and on y-axis context. So data is sitting where there is very little understanding and there is pretty much no context. But as we increase our context, of, it becomes information. So who, what, when, where kind of questions convert data into information. But when we start asking questions like how this information is generated or how certain things in the information are happening, we start to build knowledge. And further down, if we start repeating the DIK process, we generate wisdom where we start asking why questions, so why certain um, things exist. Um, so in the, in the context of GIS, um, we are gathering facts and figures from all over the world in the form of maps and sensor data. And then what GIS helps, it creates this system here of information that can be used um, to answer, to do analysis which increases our knowledge and even do um, increases wisdom where 
we create uh, policies and we create um, processes that can help help us better interact with our um, environment our and our space. So if we look at the GIS and DIKW model together, what's going on is that we have the data that is coming from the earth or, 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 or earth surface and earth environment. And as the GIS helps us um, create information from that data, knowledge from that data, and eventually wisdom that from that data. And this helps the, on, on the on the access axis, it increases our understanding of the space. And once we have a better understanding, we can take actions and we can take uh, make decisions. Now, when we take actions based upon some decisions, they eventually end up changing our real world and producing new data. So this cycle repeats. And this is where, uh, in, a, in an abstract sense, um, this is where GIS fits in our, um, our interaction with our real world.